What would you do if one day your neighbor, who you've known for years, you see him building a bomb shelter? Would you think, ah, that guy's crazy? Or would you wonder, what does he know that I don't? It turns out banks right now are building a bomb shelter. Just this quarter, Canada's big six banks have set $4.3 billion aside to cover bad loans. That's almost double what they set aside in the first quarter of last year and more than 11 times what they set aside in the first quarter before that. Banks are setting aside a larger amount of money than they ever have before. Not just now, but in the previous quarter and in the quarter before that and the quarter before that. The experts we spoke to say a big issue has to do with home ownership. Interest rates rose uh, fast and by a large amount in a way that's never been done in Canada's history. The potential for things to go wrong is greater than it ever has been. Mm -hmm. Mortgage rates are higher now than they have been in decades, but that's been true for a while, right? And they just dropped. So what do the big banks know that the rest of us don't? So far, Canadians have managed rising interest rates pretty well, at least when it comes to staying on top of their mortgages. Only 0.19% of mortgages in Q1 of this year were behind on payments by more than three months. That is up slightly from last year, but considering we've been living through one of the most aggressive interest rate hiking campaigns in Canadian history and record high inflation rates at the same time, we're in decent shape. But here's the thing. Even though interest rates have steadily climbed over the last year and a half, so far, the majority of Canadians with a mortgage haven't actually seen any change to their monthly payments. There's a couple of reasons for this. One, more than half have a fixed rate. I have a fixed rate. It's only when my five-year mortgage contract expires that I have to take a new higher rate. And you know what? More than three quarters of all mortgages in Canada as of February are coming up for renewal between now and the end of 2026. Again, I'm part of this group, and it's a little unusual to have that many mortgages renewing in the same short period of time. Except it makes total sense, because most Canadian mortgages are on either three or five year terms, and three to four years ago, it was a very ideal time to buy. Back then, in 2020, 2021, even into the beginning of 2022, uh, we saw these historic low interest rates, and people were taking out loans then and taking out bigger loans, right? They go and buy a house that they wouldn't have been able to afford at 3% or 4%, but they could afford at 1.25%. They called it real estate Christmas because it was the most real estate sold in the history of the countries. But now, all those people who got in when the going was good Every single Canadian with a mortgage from that record low rate era is going to see their payments shoot up. How much depends on when exactly their renewal date falls and how much the Bank of Canada can cushion the fall by lowering rates. The Bank of Canada has lowered its benchmark interest rate by a quarter percentage point, the first rate cut since March of 2020. So symbolically, this is the first rate cut. Usually there are more uh, that follow. When we do get two, three cuts uh, behind our belt, then I do think the effects will be more visible and noticeable, but that's going to take uh, some time. But pretty much everyone agrees, if you're paying under 3% interest right now, I'm among those people, your monthly payments are going up when you renew, and not by a small amount. Like, are we going to see rates come all the way back down to the kind of very low levels that we saw during the pandemic or before the pandemic? I think the answer is no. So let's say there's a young couple in Ontario that bought an average priced house in 2019, $631,990. They put pretty standard down payment, uh, down 20%, which leaves you with a mortgage size of about $500,000. Amortize the loan over 25 years. They take a five-year fixed rate of 2.9%, which was also kind of standard at the time. That means they've been paying about, and I'm rounding to the nearest dollar here, 2,367 bucks a month for the past few years. But now that mortgage is up for renewal. Welcome to 2024. And the couple signs on to another fixed rate mortgage, but they have to do it at the bank's current rate, which is around 6%. That means their new monthly payment 
is, again, I'm rounding here, $3,075 a month or an extra 700 bucks a month. Right now, I'm looking at the renewal rates somewhere between six and the six and a half percent. So that's gonna be like bringing my payments 30 to 40 percent up. I don't see how I'm going to be able to, to renew and, and afford this. According to the Bank of Canada, a 30 percent increase like that is actually on the low end of what many of these mortgage holders can expect. If you took out a mortgage a year or two later, in 2020 or 2021, for example, you could be looking at paying like 50, 60 percent more. Now, maybe you're thinking, but what about all the people that took variable rate mortgages, which rise and fall in real time with the prime rate? So they've already been stretching their budgets and there's no impending disaster for them, right? Well, not entirely. There is one group of mortgage holders the banks and the government are particularly worried about, and it's not the fixed rate holders. It's the variable rate holders with fixed monthly payments. And that's actually most variable rate holders in Canada. This is important. About 65% of them, 70% of them, have not noticed any radical increase in their payment because their mortgage company sold a product where the payment did not go up when Prime went up. Their payment did not go up when Prime went up. That's the important part to understand because it means you might have people ultimately paying more without even realizing it. Think of it this way. This circle is your $2,200 a month mortgage payment. At a relatively low interest rate, depending on the overall size of your mortgage, that might mean $900 of that payment is just servicing interest with the other 1,300 actually paying your loan back. As the interest rate rises, maybe now instead of $900 a month, it's $2,100 a month in interest. But your contract says your total payments stay the same, so you're still paying $2,200 a month, meaning only 100 of those $2,200 are actually paying down your loan. At that point, I have news for you you're very close to being underwater, stuck in a perpetual state of paying down a loan where you're only barely paying down that loan. Welcome to lifelong debt. The time it will take to pay off his mortgage nearly doubled from 25 to 47 years. I wasn't happy when I saw that. At first, I thought it was uh, actually a, a mistake. BMO, TD, and CIBC all allow for these negative amortization periods, which is just a jargony way of saying that they're stretching the length of your loan. They say those kinds of terms actually help their clients, whether interest rate hikes by, you know, keeping their monthly payments stable, keeping them predictable. But you can't keep extending your loan forever. At the end of your five-year term, things snap back to reality, meaning your payments shoot up. For those people, when they renew, it could be shocking, like legitimately shocking. According to a recent report by RBC economists, some of these variable rate mortgage holders could see payments jump as much as 84% by 2026 if interest rates do not decline. And remember, for some people, part of that will be because they've paid down so little principal. Worst case scenario, their outstanding loans could be nearly as big as they were at the start because they've just been paying interest the whole time. They might have been spending the last five years thinking that they were building up some equity in their home only to find that all of that's now been eliminated. Now, luckily, most economists do expect rates to keep dropping. But according to that same RBC report, it still might not be enough to, quote, save this cohort. To get them down to a more manageable monthly increase, like 20%, they argue the Bank of Canada would have to lower its prime rate way down to around 0.25% by July 2026 something they admit is an unreasonable expectation at the moment. The cuts are going to come at a slow and measured pace, not the way that they went up. So a quarter of a percentage point here or there is probably not going to be enough to save people that if you're that much on the edge of the cliff that you're worried about going over. Collectively, we're just starting to approach the edge of this cliff. RBC estimates about $186 billion worth of mortgages are up for renewal in 2024. Next year, it'll be $315 billion. 
That's a ton of mortgage debt that was taken on at historically low interest rates by people who may or may not have been able to afford getting into the housing market otherwise. And a lot more people are homeowners now than they have been in previous generations. We've almost created this belief in Canada that if you're not a homeowner, it's almost like you're a second class citizen. And so part of that belief then that we need to do whatever is necessary to get a home has put us in a position now where uh, we get those dollars from banks. Uh, and so the banks are now more involved in the housing market than they've ever been before, which means that even if it's the same failure rate, 1%, 5%, 10% of mortgages go bad, it's 1%, 5%, 10%, .10 of a very large number now. The federal agency that oversees financial institutions is pretty clear about what all of this adds up to. For 2024 and 2025, it puts real estate and mortgage debt as the top risk for Canada's financial system. If anything's going to destabilize a market, it's disproportionately more in the mortgage market than in the others. Canada's two most expensive provinces have already started to notice a rise in missed mortgage payments, driven mostly by homeowners under 36 years old. And according to Scotiabank's chief risk officer, I didn't know that was a thing, but it is, the number of customers they consider vulnerable increased by 22% in just the last quarter. Most of those people are also in the Greater Toronto Area or Vancouver. The old rule of thumb in my day was you spend about a third of your income on housing. Uh, now you'll hear anecdotal evidence, particularly in places like Vancouver, Toronto, where you'll hear 70 to 75 percent of income is being spent on housing. So in those cases, then, if they have to reset at a higher interest rate, uh, it's the house that's going to go down first. So you start to see why banks are preparing for the worst. And it's not just the threat of mortgage defaults. It's the trickle-down effect. Those higher payments could have on everything else. Because before anyone's going to risk losing their home, they're probably going to start cutting corners on other things. And data shows many already have. We might take on more credit card loans. We might end up not paying our car loans or our lines of credit to try to keep up with our mortgage payments. Those are really good signs of, of stress in an economy. And there are real concerns. We're seeing some, some problems with the ability to repay those loans because Canadians have been so stretched and so thin over the course of these last two years. Every analyst we spoke to agreed. How bad this gets depends on the Bank of Canada. If rates drop substantially, over the next few months, we could actually avoid a significant shock. But based on what we've heard from the banks so far, a slow, gradual decline is still more likely.